as we think, as I think everybody knows at this point, this has very much been the season of the footballers' apology. We have been treated to some of the great, most necessary apologies in the history of human civilization, with footballers apologizing, apologizing for war crimes such as missing penalties, red cards, and other such atrocities. And the most recent of these was just last week, which Thomas Partey uh, got on terms with. He released an official statement after Arsenal's exit from the Carabao Cup. He said he was responsible for anything that happened against Liverpool and will take all critiques. And to make sure you know he meant it, he printed it on headed paper with the Thomas Partey logo and signed it at the bottom. So such an amazing display of apologising got us thinking, just how does a sports person compose the perfect apology and we've gone through some of the most important apologies in history to help us through a five-step guide to apologizing good step one is find decent reason to apologize this is textbook stuff an apology isn't worth the headed paper it's written on unless you've got good reason to apologize for we know that satanic acts such as making errors in the football pitch deserve full contrite apologies but there are other things in football that also deserve the apologizing treatment take for example impaling a teammate uh, in 2015 st Mirren captain stephen thompson drew uh, he took a spike training pole out of the ground and threw it at his then teammate john mcginn striking him on the thigh and causing severe bleeding i'm just mortified by the whole thing he said at the time it was a daft prank it wasn't like I threw the pole out of anger or anything like that. That's not what happened. Bottom line here is this. If you're wondering whether or not it is suitable to apologise, ask yourself if you put somebody's career in danger. If the answer to that question is yes, you can go ahead and apologise. Step two. If possible, blame the whole thing on something cute and or cuddly. So if you're running a sporting organisation and you can, if it's within your capabilities, to blame a small animal or a baby or maybe uh, a mascot for your misdeed, then you should absolutely take that advantage. In 2014, the Jacksonville Jaguars mascot, Jackson DeVille, went for the nuclear option when trying to slander the terrible towels of the Pittsburgh Steelers. The mascot showed up with a terrible towel in one hand and a sign in the other that read, Towels have Ebola. Jacksonville <laughs> apologised at the time, saying, Improvisation and humour have both been key elements to the character of Jackson DeVille, especially when he performs at home games. On Sunday, the person who has played Jackson over the past 20 seasons made an extremely poor decision in that regard. The team was unaware of this inappropriate sign, which was handmade by Jackson during the fourth quarter of yesterday's game until after it had been displayed. We extend our sincerest apologies to anyone who was offended. A shrewd move by uh, the Jaguars at the time, I'm sure you'll agree, directing all the blame towards that pesky, furry animal. And you can take note of this, Bruno Fernandes. The next time you miss a penalty, before you apologise, ask yourself, is there any way I can throw Fred the Red under the bus for this particular misdeed? Step three is uh, use your apology to distract from something else. This is a, a very, very good one. Do not let a good crisis go to waste. So where possible, try not to apologise for something until you really need the apology to cover for something else. If you have to wait one or two years, no problem. If you have to wait 17 or 18 years, also no problem. Here's Pat Spillane apologising for something he said in 2003 in 2021. That word puke football, I only mentioned it once ever in my life and it's something that has stuck to me, that's fine. Uh, and it's something that they said the shortest fully constructed sentence in the English language is I am sorry. I am sorry for saying that. Mea culpa, mea culpa, mea maxima culpa. Of course, in the same broadcast, Pat Spillane pointed out the vacuum of information that existed around the Tyrone COVID situation. At the time, they said that Tyrone had played a blinder in the build-up to the game. So this was your tactic Trojan horse move from Pat Spillane. Using the apology was like a way to break down the defences and then launch an offensive with whatever agenda he pleased. And it doesn't matter if you use misinformation as well during this. He said Tyrone were the team of the decade or something like that. Uh, <laughs> not true whatsoever. That's the best that, apology of fine. all time because yeah. it, it, it corrects the record on, on multiple different fronts. It was it was a humiliating climb down on behalf of all of Kerry. It was jazz hands. Jazz hands using whatever information he Had to work out in the uh, end. And I appreciate it. I mean, let's... What happened uh, that day? I mean, a long time ago at this point I mean, we'll, we'll eventually we'll eventually get to that we'll eventually get to coming to terms with that one day in the future in 20 years time uh, step four when in doubt do the exact opposite of what Richard Keyes would do so this is the first thing you learn in apology school when in doubt about apologising do not do as Richard Keyes does so uh, plenty of you will remember the apology interview he gave on TalkSport after his scandal at Sky Sports but I'm not sure how many of you remember the job <laughs> the video editors at TalkSport did 
editing the interview into a dramatic YouTube clip. We're going to play 90 seconds of this because it's magic. And just remember, I did not touch this. This is TalkSport editing their own interview with Richard Keyes at the time. There are some dark forces at work here. <laughs> Many of the people that I've been sitting, reading, who have been making judgments on me, I know very well. Very well. I rang on behalf of Andy and myself Sunday afternoon. I made it an official apology, which Sean accepted. She and I enjoyed some banter together. I was wrong. Andy was wrong. We were both wrong. Our prehistoric banter is not acceptable in a modern world. Rio, are you telling me it doesn't take place in the Manchester United dressing room? Because my information is it does. Sure. You know, it, it doesn't really matter what I feel, does it, about me? It, you know, it's an irrelevance. I, I, anything I say now, you'll get another text in a minute saying, oh, he's whining about himself. I'm not. It doesn't matter. I tried to ring Karen twice on Sunday night. She didn't answer the phone. There is no answer phone. So I text her in case she saw a number she was unfamiliar with and didn't want to answer it. I said, Karen, it's Richard Keyes. I very much need to talk to you. Could you please take my call or ring me back? I tried to ring her to say sorry and she didn't take my call. If, if operating in the manner that I do, staying away from red carpets, staying away from tweeting, staying away from blogging, keeping myself to myself for my family, if that's aloof, I'm guilty of that as well. <laughs> well, well I think, uh, spoiler alert, Richard Keyes uh, stopped being aloof uh, oh, yeah. uh, a short time after that. Check out his blog. Just for uh, com completion, they ended up on TalkSport presenting a show for a long period of time after it's this. It's a good point, yeah. yeah so that was, the, that was the, look at the numbers this guy's doing, let's get him in. So. Mm. It's, a, it's only a section of a, of a longer clip that's a, available on YouTube. Richard Williams in The Guardian at the time said, as exercises in damage limitation go, it was like walking into Versailles Hall of Mirrors wearing a suicide bomber's exploding vest. So the apology at that point didn't necessarily go down well. So basically, when in doubt, do the opposite of what Richard Keyes would do, uh, which brings us into... The, the Karen Brady bit's amazing. Oh, my so God. So just explain what's going on there. So at this stage, obviously, uh, Karen Brady is a football executive... Um, was she at West Ham? But she wasn't at West Ham at that stage, or she wasn't so. at Birmingham, right? So anyway, and I, would this be before she was? This is a long time ago, isn't it? This is twenty eleven. So maybe she was already on The Apprentice. I think she was, yeah. right? And she had written an article criticizing them. Yeah. And he's like, "She won't take my apology." Who is she? What? She won't take. Who does she think she has not taken my apology? That's what that was. No yeah. answering machine. I was like, "What? In that case, my number? What? I must be allowed to apologize, and you must accept it." It's like, oh, that's not really how this works, Richard. <laughs> that's not how it works. Yeah, just one of uh, one of many, many amazing moments in that. Except then, my apology. Then there is like the, the, the BT apology. Well, not the BT apology, the BT interview he does then a couple of years later, uh, which I thought was like uh, only maybe a few years ago from, from this point, but actually it was 2013. And there was a very sort of, oh, let's talk about this ancient history thing. I was like, that was only two years ago. <laughs> Um, You're still the same. Still, yeah, still very much. Yeah. Um, step five. This is the final step. Uh, when in doubt about apologising, just be Eric Cantona. So today, on this day in 1995, Eric Cantona's kung fu kick sent shockwaves through the Premier League. But uh, the resulting flirtations with an apology should be a lesson to all wannabe apologisers. So here is Cantona talking to journalists at a press conference shortly after the incident. When the seagulls. Follow the trawler. It's because they think sardines will be thrown into the sea. Thank you. Just a beautiful analogy towards the, the media there. And then uh, a Nike ad which shortly followed uh, came out and this is where Cantona did indeed apologise for his misdeeds. Make an apology. I made some terrible mistakes. Last year, in a certain final victory, I only scored one goal. Against Newcastle, I put shot three inches wide of the post, and at Wembley I failed to complete an trick. I realized this behavior was unacceptable, and I promise not to make such mistakes again. Thank you. So there you have it. Take note, any wannabe apologisers uh, and enjoy a long and fruitful career in the Premier League if you can follow those five tips. But uh, yeah, Eric Cantona, 27 years today since uh, the, like one of the most uh, incredible moments in the I, history of football. I think 
I, it's almost underrated how unbelievable it, has anything ever been as big a story in the Premier League ever well like I, I obviously don't remember the, the story itself but it's like I mean if you if it was to happen like it's hard to it's hard to compare then and now because obviously there would be everybody would have there would be a million different angles of it now whereas actually there's the one angle really I mean there's probably some others in the documentaries that were, have emerged over the years where it's slightly different and you might be able to get to see Matthew Simmons in the crowd it's an early bath for you Mr Cantona which is definitely what he said um, <laughs> and I, it's like it's shocking to me that it's that long ago but also how uh, how underrated a story this is in, in some ways like he gets banned for a period of time but then comes back and is unbelievable yeah. whereas now I don't think you come back yeah. I don't think you get to come back at all you get sacked immediately Ooh, you reckon? Oh, you cannot wait into the crowd. Can't, can't kung fu kick somebody and oh, then yeah. batter them. Because you're, you're an athlete who, who like, looks after themselves and does weight and you can do damage to this, yeah, like, of course. I, you know, flabby lout. It's like, it's, an unf- it's a mismatch. Yeah, no, I, I accept and that. And you get sued by your man, no matter what he said. Well, I don't know, maybe, maybe. Maybe they have a cantina clause on all the, the grounds at the moment. Enter at your own risk of studs to the chest or something. Perhaps. Like, you know, you know the like. I mean, the the classic phrase. I'm not sure if you subscribe to this notion that you know. I'd, I'd rather get a, a punch in the face than a spit in the face. No, gonna, you don't buy that clearly because I was going to say that you know. No. Like spit a, on me, spit on me, don't punch me. Because <laughs> I, I, obviously, when you like go through apologies and stuff like that, one of the first things that comes up in relation to football is is Jamie Carragher and and his apology on Sky after the spitting incident. Oh, and that was that was a career that he's put back together pretty well. And he obviously, um, I mean, m- m- maybe it's different as a as a pundit as opposed to a footballer. That's from his car. That was from his car, yeah, driving down the motorway. But um, like that, like does uh, a modern day kung fu kick uh, would that have led to a sacking as opposed to spitting at somebody? Is is, is what I would. Say. I think yeah. if you kung fu kick another player, you're grand. You get your six month ban, whatever. It's like oh, oh, this guy's dodgy character, and all That's the, the young, all the all the usual stuff happens, right? Um, well, the the young was accidental. Whereas, so if if you. If you on purpose were to do what Maradona does sure. in, that, in that fight, right now, except it was kind of, it seems like it's unprovoked, right? You're you're in a lot of trouble, but you're getting your career back. If you wade into the crowd now, doing what Cantona did, I'm not sure you get your career back. I'm certainly, I don't know, but like he came back and was the outstanding footballer in in England for the next two and a half, maybe two seasons, maybe a bit longer. Mm. It's like, and wins a league by scoring the winner in every goal for about nine games in a row. It's yeah. like it's mad. Like and I'm sure that there is a huge degree of anger influencing the level of performance at that point, but not only from him, but also from like Alex Ferguson, who like comes to his not comes to his defense, but like takes Cantona by the hand and is like, right, let's get out in front of this. Let's kind of let's be contrite and let's try and accept the ban. And then the FA weighed into proceedings and are like, oh, you've said you're going to take a ban, well, we're going to give you an even bigger ban because we want to be seen to be doing something here on this occasion. Maybe they were right, but I think that they were, the FA were like on a big power trip. Uh, well, that, but that I think way. the FA were like, yeah, 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 right, you're right. We are, yeah, we, we, yeah, uh, we've got no power now. We're exactly. taking our power. Yeah, we are outraged. Oh, you're outraged too. But we're supposed to be angry at you. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, what do we do here? <laughs> And they got I, they got a bit confused. I, Eric Dyer waded into the crowd about twenty months ago. He's still oh, at yeah. Spurs. Yeah, like, it's it's not the same. It's a good point. He did, he did wade it's, into the crowd. Did, but he, he, did he kung fu he, kick he somebody go, and batter I, them? I don't think so. He just had a chat. Yeah, like, it's completely different. Like, um, and actually, Derek Dyer got in a lot of trouble for that. Mm. Like, there was, ooh, what, what's his character? It was like he's protecting his brother, wasn't it? Well, that was that was it? Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, I think, I, I think it's very different. Imagine James McLean went and responded to somebody in the cloud in the crowd yeah. the way Cantona did which yeah he I wouldn't uh, wouldn't be a fan of seeing what, what the outcome of that would be uh, to be honest that the, the, the book we get thrown there to, to say the very least his like, career in England would be over 100% like the like one of the, 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 the kind of funnier parts of, of all this was this, the, the sense of injustice that people felt had been meted out to Cantona and maybe you can make an argument that the, the length of the ban was Maybe a little bit longer. I can ex- I can see why people would make that argument, but you'd like um, people with like face paint and say, saying Eric is innocent and all that sort of stuff. Being like, I mean, there is pretty uh, clear footage right there of of what what he actually did. In uh, in parts of France, it's taken as a, a, a term of endearment when you kung fu kick somebody and um, and batter them. <laughs> it's like uh, it's considered you know uh, a, a mating ritual. Um, uh, 
20, I can't believe, 27 years? 27 years. I wrote my first piece of journalism about this in the Kildare Nationalist. Defend, oh, no way. Defending Eric Cantona. Oh, well, what was your uh, reason for defence? <laughs> well, I just thought that, like, if you're taking crap from people in the crowd, you should be allowed to, you know, not take that crap. And there's always a massive overreaction in these situations. Um, uh, what would the apology be for uh, Danny Rojas for killing the dog? <laughs> God, you can't apologise for killing an animal. Killing an animal is the the, the lowest of the low. I mean, that's so that uh, would be a very contrite apology. Yeah, like I, I, I just don't think there's any coming back from from harming an animal. I think that's that's those that's accidental. Like, so like, still the dog dies. I mean, there's there's a website called Does the Dog Die dot com where its sole function is to tell you whether or not a dog dies in a movie because people are so traumatised by it. It's not do heads get severed in this movie or whatever. It's Does the Dog Die. I mean, I presume Marley and Me features. <laughs> Spoiler, first of all, for <laughs> anybody out there, but I, I, I suspect it does. Um, yeah, we need to take out this Kildare Nationals piece. Is there like an, is there a good archive? Is there like can, I don't we, know. can we get a premium subscription? Uh, I don't know. OTBAM is brought to you by Gillette. Good morning. Start with Gillette. Put your best face forward with a new and improved razor. No room for Tiger Woods in the midst of this. The great sports apologies. Like I mean, it's. I think we've, t- we've taken all the lessons we can from from Tiger Woods at this point. Like, Nathan pointed out that his mum was sitting in the front row. Yeah. I mean, he's apologising for like having a lot of sex. Yeah. That's a tricky enough situation. In retrospect, like it was all fine, and then I didn't. I didn't realise. I mean, I'm obviously at the time. Would have realised, but like, that's hard. They made that. They they added a little wrinkle there. It's like, oh, you're going to have to explain about. I mean, I guess she she knows what he's like, but she's probably read the papers and uh, she like. I mean, I, I don't there's be- a difference between reading the papers and actually like face to face. Look, ma, I did all these bad things. I, I, the stuff they're saying in the papers and the stuff that you're seeing at the supermarket tabloids. You know, when you're piling up your shopping and it's me and it's. Elin and it's the kids and it's like 19 other people uh, it's all true that's a hard conversation to have yeah yeah I, like, I, don't, I don't think she showed up though thing, like, and, and was completely uh, what? thrown away by the events <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what? this is the first I've heard of this well, I thought you were announcing your comeback no um, yeah no that's oh, like, it's, it's such an icon and Nathan also mentioned the, the oversized suit a little bit oh, like yes it's uh, another sort of jazz hands moment look at the look at the the, the big jacket on me. Yeah, well, a part of that is look how small I am. I'm I'm cowed by this. I'm I am broken. You know, I'm not the thrusting because uh, you know, normally he's like, look at my muscles. Mm. Couldn't do that because it would be like, well, well, I really apologise for here. Look at look at me. <laughs> I mean, look look at this. Yeah, uh, that's that's true. Actually, that's uh, that's a good PR move. Actually, oh, one on one. Cor Sheehan, some connection. I'm sure there is. Yeah. Of course, Shane. Tired and emotional, the best apology of all time. Did he do it? Did he, was it was it a written apology or was there a, a verbal... I don't know. I, we should do a deep dive on the tired and emotional scenario. We definitely should because I don't... 20, 20th anniversary this year. Oh, it is, is it? Yeah. All oh, right. Th- th- 20th anniversary of tired and emotional. Roy... Uh, uh, Dunphy. Oh, sorry. Who are you thinking? Uh, Brian Cowan. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, of course. Uh, Twenty is it not nineteen years this year? Is it not two thousand two? Yeah, what year is oh, this? Oh, it is twenty twenty two. Oh my gosh! 